No matter what else is happening in the world. There is always good news today. Welcome to Good News Today, the program where you will always find good news, no matter what else is happening in the world. I'm Mark Teske, your host for Good News Today. I want to thank you for joining us. And we've got a great program. Here's what's coming up. We're going to begin with our devotional time, and that consists of our scripture reading, beautiful singing, and a brief study of our scripture. Today, we'll be looking at Luke 17, verses 26 through 29, a passage where Jesus talks and makes a comparison using Noah and Lot. Get out your Bibles, turn to Luke 17. I'm going to meet you there in just a moment. Following our devotional time, Roger Campbell will be answering a question about the lack of information about so many aspects of Jesus' life. Jim Dearman will join us with some sound words about not for sale. Joe Guy will visit us on the pastime porch, and he's got some thoughts about our opinions and the faith of those around us. In our final segment, we have a Bible question for Guyton Montgomery and Troy Spradlin. Should we look at the epistles as love letters or as legal documents? We're talking about the text of the Bible today, and I hope you have your Bible opened up to Luke 17, where we read beginning at verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Here in Luke chapter 17, Jesus is talking about the upcoming destruction of the city of Jerusalem. And we have 
similar language here as we see in the first 35 verses of Matthew 24 when he's talking about that destruction as well. See, in both places, those who were there were being warned by God so that they would know how to act so that they could be saved. But those who reject God were going to suffer destruction. Now let's give a little context to the history here. You see, the Jews had rebelled against Rome uh, back in 66 AD, and they kicked the Romans out, and there was bloody infighting among themselves for the period of several years thereafter. So Rome came to Judea to take control by whatever means was necessary. And this army was led by General Titus. Now, Titus was the son of the emperor, Vespasian, and uh, Titus would go on to become emperor himself nine years later after his father passed away. So as Titus and his armies would come around Jerusalem, there was a, a siege and then utter destruction. The dead were, and blood was running down the streets. It was a horrible, horrible slaughter. And those who survived would be enslaved by the Romans. History tells us the Christians who were there avoided this slaughter by listening to the warnings of Jesus, and they left Jerusalem as soon as they saw the first signs of the Roman army on its way. So here in our text, as Jesus is warning the Christians about that, he makes two comparisons, one to Noah and the worldwide flood we read about in Genesis 6 and 8, and the other to Lot and the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah we read of in Genesis chapter 19. In both of these cases, people were going about their normal lives, oblivious to the destruction that was coming. They didn't know. They were just going about usual activities, even things planning for the future, like getting married. This, in a similar way, the people of Jerusalem would go about their lives oblivious to the destruction that was coming by the Romans. The day of the Lord, when Jesus would come in judgment uh, upon them. So as we look at application here, uh, Noah and Lot, Sodom, Gomorrah, these were real people in actual events. Jesus is referring back to them. Uh, and, you know, it turns out there's a lot of skeptics that will question the historicity of the flood. They'll question the historicity of, of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. But these things were affirmed by Jesus right here. He's telling us what people were doing just before those disasters struck. And to question the truthfulness of the book of Genesis is to question the truthfulness of Jesus. Yet he was sinless, Hebrews 4.15. So when Jesus is referring to these things, he's telling the truth. These events actually occurred. And this teaches us about the reliability of Scripture. Jesus didn't question the record. He didn't question it at all. He treated what we read about in Scripture as the truth. So it must be. He also talked about Jonah in Luke eleven thirty two. 32. He said, you're going to get to see those men of Nineveh that repented on the judgment day. And in Luke eleven fifty one, 51, he refers to Abel as the first one murdered. That was back in Genesis chapter 4. So we can trust the Bible, all of it. Jesus did. And this passage also teaches us about sudden judgment. That judgment could be our own death. We don't know when that's going to come. Or it could be when Jesus comes again, that last day to judge the earth. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 18, tells us there's going to be a shout, the voice of an archangel, the trumpet of God. The faithful will meet Jesus in the air. Everybody's going to know that day. It's going to be quite the sight. And that day is going to be a wonderful day for those faithful to God. And that is good news for us today. Why doesn't the Bible tell us everything that Jesus did? That's the question posed to Roger Campbell. Be ready always. If you are a student of the Bible, 
then surely you have recognized that the Bible does not record every single thing that Jesus did. And sometimes people want to know, well, why not? If Jesus really was the Son of God and such a great being, why wouldn't God tell us everything that He did? How would you answer that question? It's a fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, John 14 and verse 6. And it's a fact that He's a fulfillment of all the Old Testament prophecies about the Christ. He is the Christ. And it's a fact that He's the Savior of the world. But it's equally true that the Bible does not record everything that he did when he lived on the earth. And people want to know, well, well, why not? In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we have a record from four of Jesus' followers. We might call them four partial biographies of Jesus' life. They record some of the things that Jesus did and some of the things that Jesus said, but not everything. From the time of Jesus' childhood, early childhood, until the time that he was 12 years old, we don't have a record of anything that he did. 12 years old is when he went with Joseph and Mary to the temple, and they left him behind. And then from the time that he was 12 until the time of his baptism, we don't have any information. The Bible indicates in Luke 3 and 23 that he was baptized and began his public ministry when he was about 30 years old. So you've got about 18 blank years from the age of 12 to the age of about 30. It's really clear in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that the main attention that the Bible gives to the life of Jesus are those parts of his life which came from about 30 years of age onward. In the culmination being what? His death, burial, resurrection, and ascension back to the Father. You say, well, you still haven't answered the question. Why doesn't the Bible tell us everything that he did? Well, one answer is the quantity. He did so many things. In John 21 and verse 25, John writes, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. That's a hyperbole. It's something that's said as an exaggeration to emphasize a reality. And the reality is Jesus did so many things. So number one is a quantity. Number two, the evidence and information that we are given in the Scriptures provides adequate evidence that He really was the Son of God. John affirmed, he said, I didn't write down every sign of Jesus, but these are written, John 20, 31, these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing you might have life through His name. So we don't have everything that Jesus did because of the quantity of things, and what we do have gives us abundant proof that He really was the Son of God. Remember now, it was God's will that we have what we have, and it's God's will that we don't have what we don't have. I'm Roger King, and this has been Be Ready Always. We don't have everything that we'd like to know, but we have everything that we need to know. Thanks, Roger. Now grab some paper and something to write with, and you can write down our contact information. If you haven't enrolled in our free Bible course, contact us to get started. It's a great way for you to study your Bible. Remember that all of our courses are given free of charge. We won't try to sell you anything, and we won't pester you with solicitations. Jim Dearman's going to join us in just a moment. You may have questions or comments about Good News Today. We'd like to hear from you. Or if you would like to receive free Bible study materials, please contact us. Our mailing address is Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. Again, that's Good News Today, P.O. Box 206, Dunlap, Tennessee, 37327. You may prefer to email us at goodnewstodaytv at gmail.com. 
good news today. That's good news today TV at gmail.com or call us toll free at 1 877 384 7221. That's 1 877 384 7221. We'd like to hear from you. Hearing from our audience is always good news to us. The easiest way to enroll in the Bible course is in our website. Click where it says Bible course, fill out the form, and we'll get it to you. While you're at our website, you can see videos of our current and archive programs there. There's sections available for each of our segments, so you can watch your favorites right there on demand. There may also be some segments from years gone by that you miss and you'd like to see again. We've got several of those in the section entitled Good News Today from Yesteryear. There's so much there to enjoy. You can also enjoy us on Truth.fm, which has a channel dedicated to Good News Today. You'll hear programs from the early years of Good News Today up until today. In addition, they have several other channels that all contain excellent Bible teaching. Now here's Jim Dearman with some sound words for us about Not For Sale. We will live eternally if we obey sound words. The wise man Solomon long ago wrote by inspiration, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. That's Proverbs 22, verse 1. The late Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, Antonin Scalia, echoed Solomon's sentiment with these words. Bear in mind, he wrote, that brains and learning, like muscle and physical skill, are articles of commerce. They are bought and sold. You can hire them by the year or by the hour. The only thing in the world not for sale is character. Well, those wise words, though not inspired, have their basis in Solomon's inspired admonitions on wisdom and understanding throughout the book of Proverbs. He tells us to seek wisdom as silver and search for her as for hid treasures. This kind of wisdom comes from God, not from men. Too many today are looking for the wrong kind of wisdom in all the wrong places. Jesus said His church, the kingdom, It's like a treasure hid in a field that when found is worth selling all that we have to possess it. The kind of character that cannot be bought or sold is Christian character, obtained by following the wisdom from above revealed to us in the written word. We will live eternally if we obey sound words. The most important things in life are not for sale. Thanks for that, Jim. You can enjoy Jim's segments as well as any other of our segments in our apps. They're available for free from the App Store. You can watch on demand or you can download items to your device. You can even watch them when you're not connected. If you have a television that has a Roku built in, or if you have a Roku or Apple TV attached to that television, we've got a channel for you. We've got hundreds of videos you can watch on demand right there on your television. Well, it's time for a visit to the pastime porch where Joe Guy is waiting for us. He's going to be talking about our opinions. Well, hello. Don't you enjoy having things your way? We all seem to enjoy when we're confident in what we're doing or what we think or say. That whatever it is, that we're right. I remember Elvis Presley saying the old song, I did it my way. Well, Elvis's way didn't always work out so good for him. You know, it would be a lie to say that the Bible tells us everything. It would be truthful to say that the Bible tells us everything that we need to know. So where God allows us, we have freedom to follow our own opinions and conveniences to choose and do what He allows us. Even though we may be right in our choices and opinions, These can cause problems for others who may not fully understand what God allows. Paul talks about this problem in his letter to the Romans where Christians were struggling over whether it was allowable to eat or not eat certain foods. For Paul, the solution was simple. In Romans chapter 14, verse 14 through 16, he points out that no food or drink is necessarily unclean unless a person were to consider it wrong for their own self. 
When a Christian feels such, we should love them enough to sacrifice our own wants for their spiritual well-being. Paul wrote to the Romans while he was in Corinth, where this issue was a real problem in those days, where much of the fresh meat and foods were only available in the city markets or from the pagan temples, and some Christians themselves, former pagans, just didn't feel right about eating that meat. Paul doesn't seem to have a problem with eating any type of food as he knew that God allowed it. But he does not dismiss that some people did. And if his actions, though allowable, caused another Christian to stumble or turn away from God, then his freedom to choose became sinful when his opinion became more important than the welfare of others. Paul's message was that it's always better to sacrifice our opinions, even if we're right, if the opinion will result in damaging another's salvation. We should love others more than ourselves. Whatever we do must be from conviction, knowing our reasons are true and correct, with a mind toward our effect on others. Isn't it better to be more Christ-like, to love others as much more than ourselves? When it comes to deciding what we want over what is best for another, isn't it better to simply trust the timeless text? I'm Joe Guy. Thank you for stopping by. Putting others ahead of our own opinions, that's great instruction from the Word of God. Thanks, Joe. If you enjoy podcasts, we have three of them available. Getting to them can be a simple process. If you have an Apple device, just say, Siri, play the podcast Good News Today, Daily Devotional Time. Or you can insert the name of another smart device that you have in your home. In just a moment, we'll give our Bible question to Guy Montgomery and Troy Spradlin. Now we have a Bible question for Guyton and Troy. Should we look at the epistles as love letters or as legal documents? Hey, uh, Troy, here's your question for today. Okay. Do you like chocolate ice cream or strawberry ice cream? Uh, I, I, I like them both. <laughs> <laughs> I like them both. Why do I have to pick between the two? You know, and sometimes we see that, that we get asked a question that's not an either or. Oh, answer. Uh-huh, it's a, right. it's kind of a both okay. answer. And, that, and that's today's question. Uh, somebody wrote in and wanted to know, should we look at the epistles as love letters or as legal documents? Ah, okay. Well, yeah, exactly. Why, why not both? But to clarify for, for our listeners or viewers, uh, maybe they're both, but um, don't have to be either or. Right? <laughs> but um, to clarify, what, what, what are we referencing when we say epistles? We're talking about the letters that are written, typically starting around uh, Romans all the way to the end. Even Revelation is kind of an epistle itself, but it, it's a letter. It's a letter that the apostles and the disciples wrote to the churches uh, in that time frame. And so we get these um, questions kind of posed to us different ways, but it's always kind of the same one. Is how do we view these epistles? Um, are they love letters? Or are they legal documents? And normally, Troy, what I notice is it, it it's accompanied by somebody saying, well, you're just being legalistic. When we look to, let's say, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and we're concerning how the church is to collect for its offering, mm-hmm. and we use that as authority for we take a free will offering on the first day of the week as we've been prospered. Well, but all through the, that's the thing. That's why it's kind of hard question to answer. Is it either or? But you have on one hand where he's saying, you know, I'm so thankful for you. I heard about your faith. I commend you. Uh, all these wonderful things that he says. 
Well, we got to understand that these letters are written to churches that were having problems most of the time. And so you also see words like, I charge you, I command you, hold fast to the doctrine. Paul wrote are, to Timothy, preach the word. Preach, exactly. So there are definitely commandments. So they are legal documents if they're giving you a command. But at the same time, you know, why is it not anything like what would, maybe your parent would write you? You know, if your parent, if your mom writes you in your school, well, I love you, son. Be sure and do your laundry, you know, brush your teeth. You know, it's just, it's both. Exactly. And, you know, I think sometimes we think when commands or authority are used or legal documents, because think about the law of Moses, God handed down the law of Moses to the uh, Jewish nation, to That's the right. nation of Israel. And, um, you know, was it a law? Was it legal? Yes. But why did God give it to him? From love. From, from love, everything, all, all his commands, his discipline, everything God has done is love. And so was, were all the epistles written in love? Are they a love letter? Yes. Yeah. But it doesn't take away the authority with which those men inspired of God were writing. Exactly. And let's not forget, you know, even in that in one of those letters, yeah, Paul says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable. Now, what's it profitable for? For doctrine, for reproof for correction and instruction in righteousness so that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So it covers both sides there. So should we look to the epistles as love documents or as legal documents, love letters or legal documents? Uh, the answer is both. Appreciate the love with which God inspired them, with which these human penmen wrote them, sent them, and, and with which they were received. To, to be able to help us as Christians to be able to follow after God. So see them as love letters that contain the law of Christ. Amen. Our Bibles are precious documents. We should never, ever take them for granted. Study them, pay attention, and do what you're told to do. We want to encourage you to always check all religious teaching against the Word of God. Make sure that's what it says. Be like those Bereans in Acts 17.11. If you need to hear our program or, or watch it again, you can do that and have some extra time to check the Scripture for yourself. You can do that through our website, through our apps, or through our podcast. We even have transcripts that are available. Just click on the notes when you get to the uh, actual program. Have a question, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, we love you, we're praying for you, and we want you to make it to heaven. Good news, always good news. Good news, good news, there is good news today. Good news, good news, the world, always good news. Good news, good news, there is good news today. All around the world, good news, good news, the world, always good news. Good news, good news, there is good news today.